rain, rain, rain everywhere. The whole of New South Wales and Queensland is copping a major downpour. Lavuka's closed at the moment due to the rain everywhere. All the parks are closed. But Rob and Rosemary said we could come along just to show you guys a few special tips for driving in really bad weather. And boy, it doesn't get much worse than this. As any four-wheel driver knows, Australia is a land of extremes. Sometimes you can cop a drought, sometimes you can cop a flood. It's been raining for the last couple of weeks. A whole lot of New South Wales is flooded. A lot of South East Queensland's flooded. And because of that, it's always worth thinking about practicing your mud skills. Why is that? Because you could be three or four days into a track somewhere, and all of a sudden it all changes. You've got water everywhere. You've got to get out of there. This trip is all about honing your skills in the mud. Something every four-wheel driver should practice because you never know when you're going to need them. Come along and see what we can get up to. Lavuka is a 700 acre property in Toolham, northern New South Wales. We're going to be trying out a handful of tracks across the property including the playground, rock and roll gully and Rosemary's track. And our final destination, with a bit of luck, will be the beautiful apple tree lookout. Whoa, Glenn's recently switched to the dark side and he's driving a Nissan Patrol. Our associate editor Breno is driving his 91 Toyota 4Runner. David Luke, his co-pilot, is also from the mag. We make a pretty good team and we're ready to push ourselves and our four-wheel drives to the limits. We're off to see Rob and Rosemary, the owners here at Lavuka, see what they reckon about the place in the rain. Hey! Hey, Robert! Rob's a third generation Hi, farmer here. He knows this land inside and out. Rosemary reckons it's predicted to rain for the next 28 days. A bit too much of a good thing. You got a new dog. G'day, yeah. Chad, come here. Oh, he's a wet weather model at the moment. A wet weather model. <laughs> Ten months old and round that cattle already. So <laughs> yeah, wow. Is that right? Yeah. Rob gave us a rundown on the track conditions and then we were into it. Oh boy, this weather hasn't improved what I had, has it? It's pretty nasty. It looks like fun though. <laughs> I just didn't know whether the vehicles were going to be up for it. I didn't know how far we were going to get. The track should be just insane. If we can get to the track, John. Yeah, well I guess... Um, you know, now that you're batting for the other side there with that Nissan, uh, you would be worried about getting to tracks, wouldn't you, Glenn? <laughs> yeah. Mate, I know, I know. I've given them a bagging, but uh, I'm really, really excited to get this thing out and get it dirty and see what it can and can't do. Mind you, I suppose it's already been through the, uh, the Roo Systems hot-up deal anyway, has it? It's probably as good as a three-litre Nissan gets. No reason it should not do everything. And Breno, I see you bought the mighty forerunner up, mate. What's the go? Yeah, no, Dave and I have been working on the thing for about oh, three weeks now. Yeah, every uh, yeah, every single night after work and all weekends, done a whole bunch of stuff to it. So I just want to see how she goes. I reckon you're going to be glad you did. A pair of mud rats like you, blokes, you're going to love Lavuka. Lavuka's a working cattle farm. That means plenty of cows around the place, plenty of gates. Make sure you shut them, eh? Otherwise, you'll be chasing cows instead of tracks. Everything was just soaked. You step in the mud and your foot disappeared. And we had to drive it. Oh, it should just be a kablunk, kablunk, kablunk slide. I suppose the big thing here will be to start giving it some berries down the bottom there to maintain a bit of momentum up the other side. Has that uh, dado of yours got any berries to give, mate? What do you reckon? Oh, mate, it'll have no drums going down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when it's this wet, the best thing you can do is just stick to the ruts. Mostly because that's the only thing you can do. Keep on a little bit of momentum, but don't rely on steering and brakes. You just have to go with it at the end of the day. Oh, here we go! Oh! And here's where I need to gather a bit of momentum, or at least keep it up, so I can try and climb the other side of the hill. Oh, you can. Oh, go you good thing. Oh. Oh. Yes! <laughs> oh. It's your turn, mate. Yeah. Leno knows his trucks and he knows how to build them tough as hell. Oh, well. That is slipping. Oh, here we go. Oh, well done, mate. Well done. Welcome to Lavuka. What an intro that was. Second gear low and roll it on its roof. Dave Luke's riding shotgun with Breno. Normally it's the other way around when they're driving competitions. Dave drives, Breno does the rock sloshing. Let's do this, Breno. All right. 
Being a passenger in Breno is pretty much like living on the edge. Oh, that was too easy, mate. We need something harder from you. Oh, here we go, here we go. Should have brought the 100. Oh, I don't think so. Should we step up the game a little bit? Let's Bring go and play. On. Bring it on. In the playground. <laughs> <laughs> this is an interesting little bit of track here. It all happens in about 15 metres. Unfortunately, there's a, a great big tree root poking out of the bank on the right-hand side, which is pretty much guaranteed to do a bit of panel damage. So what we're going to try and do here is find some timber from somewhere lay it down there as a bit of a bounce board to throw the truck and the wheels away from that bank. That should get us through without panel damage and um, really the trick is not to try and stop and not to rely on things like steering and brakes because they probably won't be happening. Oh gee, that's, oh, that is so slippery. This is one of those, cross your fingers, I hope you get out of it in one bit. There goes the log, bang. That was the call of the day, John. That in there? That surprised me how well it worked. I didn't snag anything. There's no traction. Uh, a bit slippery there. Jeez. Oh, it's one of those on the brakes and slide back down moment. I'll be talking to you guys, but I'm real busy. On the other side, it's all about momentum. It's not what I planned to happen. I'm not stopping. Oh, to back off now would be a disaster. I don't know how you get away with doing things like that, John, but you do. Oh, you! Oh, Lord, what a drive. Go, my <laughs> <laughs> hey, If you'd stop then, I wouldn't have liked to see what was going to happen. Good stuff. All right, I'm going to come on through. Yeah, it's a bit of brake actually. I've got a little bit of control here. Glenn's managing to use his brakes even in this thick mud. Log kept me off the off the stump. I had plenty of control. I'd say John has done a great job by knocking the top off. So here we go. Up the other side. Look at that. Makes it straight up the track. No worries. Well done, mate. That was awesome. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> Ooh, Breno's over, no traction at all. Oh, yeah. Beautiful placement. This yeah. is stuff. The log saves the day again. Not that you're really too bothered about saving a floor runner, are you? Big Cymexes are just what you need for a bit of traction up the other side. Look at that for control. That front locker doesn't work, does it? Fuck you, change. Love it. I don't think it's turning. What's that? I reckon you got a busted CV or something there. You, you just, you just did drive. that in three-wheel drive, I think. Yeah. Breno, because we shouldn't have put that hill in your road. I didn't even realise I'd broken that CV. We got out and had a bit of a look and yeah, it had, it had yeah, popped. Yeah, no, that's oh, listen to that. Oh, do you hear that? No, no, that's all right. I've got a spare in there. Oh, yeah, I'm always carrying them. You must be pretty good at swapping them now. You and oh. Lukey bust one every time you go on a Yeah, I reckon we've probably got them down to about 45 minutes now. 45 minutes? You yeah. reckon? Yeah, not too long. It's a pretty easy job. Mate, let's get the chairs and timer, eh? Peanut Glen. Lolly John. Oh, thanks, mate. Ripper. Hurry up. Hey, try not to use all of that tarp. It's a very expensive tarp. <laughs> He's one I prepared earlier. Oh, what's that? Hey, Breno. Yeah. <laughs> Can you shell it first next time, mate? <laughs> yeah, mate, open up. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to say it's the first time that I've had food thrown at me, but it's... Big <laughs> <Take not>. <laughs> Bring a chair. Oh, boy, isn't Facebook good? I can give Dave and Breno a hard time from miles away. Ooh. Oh, no. What happened? Oh, nothing mate, don't worry about that. <laughs> nothing. Oh, Did look you... at the crack in me tool! <laughs> Did you break it, Breno? No, that was Dave, definitely Breno, Dave. Breno, it's, oh. it's an unbreakable tool when you've broken it. <laughs> it's alright, Breno, you don't have to wreck it too much more. 
Oh, look at that. I reckon we've probably got him down to about 45 minutes now. A little bit ambitious. Good on you, Breno. You're a champion. I think it's like three or four hours later or something. So. so while the guys are banging in the replacement CV, I've got a bit of a tip on tyre beads. What happens is, as the tyre's coming down, something like this, there's a fair chance if it snags something, like that little lump there, it'll just peel the bead in off the rim a little bit, a bit of dirt or grass or something like that'll get in there, and because the tyre's still moving, it'll reseat itself, you know, within a turn or two going down the hill, and you'll think everything's fine. You blow the tyres up and you drive home, and then a few days later, the tyre will be flat. You'll be looking at it going, now how did that happen? I don't think I've got a puncture. You haven't. You've got a little bit of dirt in behind the rim. This will happen occasionally. Not as often, obviously. What can you do about it? Well, eventually, all you can do is let all the air out, knock the beads out, give it a clean, reseat the whole thing. Anyway, I better go and see how the guys are getting on with this CV because um, at this stage, I tell you what, if we can't get it sorted, that's going to be a very brief run for the forerunner. So one of the biggest difficulties we faced in that uh, CV swap, uh, the upper ball joint on the uh, upper control arm broke away and uh, instead of just dropping out of the uh, control arm, the actual uh, ball broke out of the cup itself. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that definitely led to a few problems later on. You got anything else in mind, mate? Oh yeah, just, just that one, mate. Thank you very much. Oh, it's not broken. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, the guys finally managed to fit the replacement CV with no real problems, except now the forerunner's got a weakened ball joint. Oh, well, here we go, three hours later. We're heading over to the Rock and Roll Gully. This place is absolutely beautiful. Might get a bit of a wash here. It's a bit of a three-pointer, so don't get too... Close, mate. Yeah, got that. As a four-wheel driver, that Rock and Roll Gully just ticks every single box for me. You know, it was tough driving up waterfalls, it was flowing, it was scenic, it was just, yeah, it was everything I'd love. Glenn's up to turn 73 on his uh, spin around. <laughs> if you hadn't been forward driving before, to, to look up a creek like that, you just wouldn't think of driving up it. This is cool. This is awesome. This is great. Rock and Roll Gully is one of the most beautiful little bits of north coast hinterland you can imagine. A lot of big boulders in it, very narrow. Anyway, we drove for, I'd say, a good couple of hundred metres. It was just really good fun. Then it all happened. This is crazy. It's narrow, there were rocks all over the place. You've got to take it really easy. Oh, this is getting, this is getting crazy. That gap's smaller than Milo. I reckon the best way to do it is just try and squeeze through. Fast flowing creek is not exactly the ideal place to have a CV break. Hey guys, um, I think I've just cracked a CV. Or something. Um, I've certainly lost drive on the right hand side and I am stuck. I think this is going to be a long night. Just moseying on up the creek, I didn't have the uh, front diff lock on, I did have the rear one on. Um, but I've got to this V-shaped section here with the big rock on the right and I just thought I'd flick the front locker on just to pull the wheel over that. It's not much of a pull and uh, she just cracked the CV straight away. With darkness really coming on strong, we need to move as quickly as possible to get the others through the rest of the creek safely. Go winch in! Everyone's up to their knees in, in water, we're soaked, there's leeches. I don't know how we're going to get the rest of the trucks through. Well, I'm past the V, but now I'll have to try and get Milo up a steep, slippery hill in three-wheel drive. OK. They ain't stop until we get to the top and... Come on, Milo. It's really good watching Breno and Dave working on the cables. I mean, uh, they've done a fair bit of, a lot of competition work together, and they work really well together as a team. They just roar into it. They throw things at each other occasionally, but they roar into it. Yeah, winch him up this, get him out of here, because we literally probably have, I'd say, 15 minutes until 
It's lights out here. Mate, I can feel about four leeches in your boots right now. Yeah? Hey, right. It's your turn, buddy. And I'm thinking, oh no, the patrol's wide. How am I going to get through there? Glenno got to see me come through, so he's got a better idea on how to handle it. But of course, the truck's wider too, the big daddo. Good Glenn was just in behind the wheel. He has this amazing ability to pick the right line. And I just drove up the bank a little bit and, and got out and did a 16 point turn to get out of the track. And this has got a fantastic turning, so not. Get up that and you're laughing. And you've done it! Go, mate, go! Oh, beautiful! Beautiful! All that Roo Systems grunt came to play on that little slope. Bang! Straight up! Then it was Breno's turn. I'll tell you what, this is serious. We're, um, we're halfway up an actual creek. I've got no winch. This might be interesting. You can say that again, Breno. I've seen Bruno break things, but that's got to be one of the best. No, that's a ball joint gone. You kidding? The whole wheel's come out. It's all right, wait there, we'll sort it. Um, this is not good at all. It's one of those situations you never ever want to get into. This is probably the worst situation you can be in. Top of the hub has basically separated from the upper control arm. So, we're going to need to do some serious bush mechanics to get this truck out of here. Um, otherwise it might become a permanent water feature. High lift jacking in wet conditions is one of the most dangerous things on earth. You really need to be careful. Think about it. Make sure the jack's got lots of traction. We obviously had to relocate the wheel back into that ball joint, which wasn't Back's easy. Back off a bit, Glenn. Back, no, Breno, not you. Back off a bit, Glenn. That's spot on, Breno. See if you can go down. Used a bit of rope around the uh, upper control arm just to try and guide it back into place. That's it! Let it down, Dave! And then lowered the high lift jack back down. Go now, mate, you're only going to get one choice. Thankfully, it actually went in pretty easy. Hand. We've landed in. it, that's it, that clunk was it. We clear? Super slow, mate. So after that, I had to back the four wheel drive out. I had John, Dave, Angle, and all spotting me. I'm going to watch the wheel. Okay. Dave's going to go behind and call you. Straight wheels, Bruno, straight wheels. We might have been doing about a kilometre an hour and the clutch was coughing a serious workout. Well, we finally got him out and then it's time for the rest of us to get out too. And we got to camp and, and I tell you, that, that meal was, was well earned that night. Just like Breno, I usually have a spare CV in the back of Milo, so I spent a couple of hours replacing it in the morning at camp. Meanwhile, Breno and Dave drove into town to pick up a replacement ball joint to fix the forerunner. So with both vehicles mended, let's see if we can keep them together for a whole day. Right, hey, first stop for us, Rosemary's Road. We'll have a bit of a muck around on the test track. Rosemary's test track is designed as a bit of a warm up for Rosemary's Road. Once you start that one, there's no turning back. Looks a bit slushy in here. It's pretty cool over here, mate. Looks awesome. Oh, this looks a bit deep. Oh, it is. The major challenge on the test track is the logs. In the dry, they're difficult enough, but in the wet, wow. <laughs> it's another thing altogether. Oh, here we go, the logs. They're not going to be so easy today. These logs are like super slippery. Bit of mud, a lot of water, slippery timber. No traction at all. Wet logs can throw you right off direction. The tyres just turn and it just spins to one side. Actually, I wouldn't mind if someone was fairly handy here with a strap. Yeah, John, I'm away. This is quite yeah. exciting. We're about to test out the roll bar. <laughs> you go, nice. Yeah, beautiful, Benno. Beautiful, mate. See how the long wheelbase of the of the GU handles these logs. It should be an advantage actually. 
Glenn's not taking any chances. Dave's going to bung the strap on in case we need it in a hurry. There's that slip, Holland. From there. Those logs were greasy. There was no other word for it. He really needs to keep it nice and steady now so that he doesn't slip right off that edge. <laughs> oh, nicely done, Glenno. Yeah, the auto definitely allowed me to control that torque a lot more. And uh, I've got that chip tuned for, to come in a low RPM so I don't get that turbo kicking in hard. So the torque is nicely controlled. And I hate to say it, but <laughs> the dado felt good. The dado felt good, I'm gonna cry! There was serious danger of going over on that right hand side. Little did I know, we were in serious danger of going over on the left hand side. Hey, um, Breno, you wanna bung the, a strap on before you have a go, or? No, I think it'll be all right, mate. I'll, I'll just take it nice and easy and see how we go without the strap for the first time. <laughs> no worries, guys. Um, <laughs> I can see some big smiles from here. Yeah, this is gonna be fun, isn't it? So I was listening to Glenn spot me over the top of those logs there and he keeps saying left, Breno, left, and I don't know, I'm thinking this doesn't feel right to me. Yeah, that's the one, mate, and left, 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 that's it. Left, left, Mate, you're a legend, I tell you. Absolute legend. I knew it Oh, Bruno, you knew you were like one lug or falling over, mate, on the left-hand side. That was insane. We normally hand over spotting duties to Glenn because he's the one guy who doesn't mix up his left from his right. Well, not anymore. Mate, you nailed that accelerator at the right time, I tell you. Wow, how close was that? And it was only because of Bruno's right foot, which is normally what gets us in trouble, that actually made us get through. You know, I have complete and utter faith in Brendan's driving. <laughs> but I idiot. prefer when I'm outside the truck. In years to come, and if someone were to ask me about Levuka, um, the first thing I will think about is Rosemary's track. That's the track that it'll stay with me forever. <laughs> Might as well just slide all the way to the bottom, I think. Driving into Rosemary's track was something else. We've gone from this beautiful, big, open, lush paddock straight into this like dark, dense bush track. This is rated extreme on the map. And that's not even in the rain. And we're straight into it. You're gonna try and crawl your way up that bank there, John? Ah, well, I, whatever I do, I'm just sliding into the tree. I'm actually resting on the shovel at the moment. I think we're gonna have to do something fairly tricky here. I can't get anyone else down here to help me, so Milo's got to do it all on its own. And the whole idea here is to use two pulleys to skew the winch pull right around to the side of the truck. Is it going to work? Well, I think we're about one mirror, one shovel and a high lift jack away from finding out. Winch manoeuvre that I've never seen before. It was fantastic. It gone around that tree. I can just get it off the exhaust pipe. I'll be happy with that. Pull the bum around a bit. We managed to pull the front half of Milo off the tree. This time we need to slide the back half around too. So the boys reposition the strap from the slider to the rear recovery point. This is where plenty of winch points on your truck really help out. How am I looking here, Breno? No, that's perfect, perfect. Beautiful. Oh, look how close that exhaust pipe is. Oh, look at the way it's turning. That's lovely, isn't it? Magic. All right, I think we'll have to knock that front off. I reckon I'll have another drive. Slide it in there, just getting out. Without those river rocks, I'd have no chance down here. I'm not surprised to see Glenno looking a bit apprehensive. It's not going to take much for things to go wrong here. With Glenno coming down, there was just no traction there at all. I slid down the hill and I had no steering. Not a hope in hell. In that position down, I'd almost say we'll have a go low, we won't try the low line. With Glenno so far past the tree, Dave suggests he takes the lower line around. It's a good idea. Glenn gives it a go. Yeah, nice and slow, nice and slow. 
Mate, I'm happy with through there. We'll give it a crack. Mate, there was just nothing there at all. I don't know how Ruthie got in the position he did. Why's Glenno over there? I thought he was going that way. Rosemary, you've done it to us again. There yeah, is holding still fronts pulling over, Glenn. Beautiful. That's really nice. Yep, lovely. Okay. Stay full left. Right, straighten up. Give it a drive. Oh, there's no room for error here. Only just enough room for the patrol to fit between the tree and the stump. Hey Glenn, are you trying to wedge this thing on purpose? And he just makes it two down, one to go. Oh, she's muddy out there, mate. We got those two old fellas through. <laughs> old fool. What's this two old bloke stuff? Now we've made it past the very first part of the very start of Rosemary's track. Mm. This is no time to muck around. Momentum's the real key here. A bit of momentum is what it's all about here. Got to basically let the truck go its own way too. Follow the ruts. That's what there is to it. Mother Nature is just so full on down here. Get a load of this creek, it's beautiful. Um, next little bit, <laughs> it's um, interesting, interesting. As far as we've had a look, which is only a couple of hundred metres, she climbs pretty much, you know, fairly straight up. Lovely little waterfalls on both sides of the track. Um, in our favour, not much. Uh, there's actually a few rocks and a little bit of traction that, you know, where the tyre marks are. This is very slippery, as you can see from the way the guys are... Um... Hey, that's pretty good, Glenn. I think that probably proves how slippery it is. To give myself the best chance possible, I'm dropping out another 8 PSI. Yep, we're going for 12 on this hill. gave that bottom part of that hill a good go three or four times. Lynchy! Oh well we will be in a minute. Which led to you know getting the winch out for the first of what would be a number of times. We are winching! Get right in down John! Sit. Yeah, well, I want to try and drive it, so... As you do when you're forward driving, you always want to drive it. You don't want to winch the whole way up. It's 
it's hard to believe there's actually a bit of traction here. My problem is now that Milo's diffing out on the bump in the middle. You don't have any other choice but to get back on the winch. This is going to be a lot of work. When we had to start winching John from the bottom, I'm thinking, oh my God, we're going to be going into the night here. Sometimes it does slow things down a bit when you're winching, but you know, often that's pretty much the only way you can get up a hill. If you're not happy running the winch cable and getting, getting completely muddy and dirty, you should be driving your 4B around town, not in the bush. Way out, man. See this tree on the right hand side? How about we pull it? I'm going for double line pulls here using the snatch block just to take it a bit easier on the winch. Coming around now. We tried a double line pull for a second time. We're just moving the winch point further and further up. Double line and double line at a time, finding a new tree every time. This is pretty much as tough as it gets winching. Winching! Got to have a go at driving it. About a metre more, mate. Well, I'm going to have to try and drive a bit to save the winch because it's just really overworking in these conditions. Can I go back for a bit of a run up, Brent? Yeah, mate, come back another foot. That's her there. Come on, old girl. Well, we start moving, but there's a tree root on the track. And that's all it takes for Milo to lose traction. No, it's not doing it. I'd say one of the hardest things about recoveries in that sort of terrain is running winch cables up that sort of track where it's hard enough to walk up, let alone drag a, you know, a winch cable all the way up. Let's do some winching! <laughs> one more big winch by the look of it. For the guys outside the truck, this is a struggle. They're soaked, there's leeches all over the place. It's just <laughs> insane conditions. Funny how we all sort of love this stuff, isn't it? Sometimes the best way to get Breno to, to get fired up and get working is to kind of give him, give him something to aim for. So we started yelling out that there's lamb cutlets at the top because we all know Breno loves a good feed. <laughs> Go, Breno! There's cutlets in it. Let's do it for the cutlets. I was pretty much running on empty by then. And oh, the image of those lamb cutlets had just pretty much got me up the top, I think. Right now, we've been winching up this one hill for what? I'd say it's probably two hours, two hours. just to get John up so get up far. 50 metres. Mate, we've got maybe 45 minutes of daylight left. We're in the middle of a rainforest, 100% humidity. It is pouring down. Two cars to go. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought about that. You've got to love Take it. attention! If you ever get into one of these situations, You've really got to think about things, everything, or you'll do some damage. Oh, it is coming down hard now, this rain. Start bringing the patrol up, man. It's no surprise with all the humidity that we've stuffed a camera. So we miss Glenn's first drive to the top. That's it! That's right, the patrol made it up the first section. It was an amazing effort. It was what it was, we were in there, we had to get out. What an absolute mission. Mate, it's a big effort. We've just crested. Um, don't know what's around the corner, but I'm pretty sure from memory that's about the worst of it. That was a few hours worth of insane. We still have Glenno and the forerunner to get up the hill. We're on one camera, and the audio just fell through on that one. To be honest, I <laughs> saw so, so John getting that stuck. I thought, what hope of we guys? <laughs> Seriously. I started driving up, thinking I'll just get up as far as I can, and the Nissan just didn't stop. It was a great feeling. I got to the top, I just couldn't believe it. Like, you'd probably hear me cheering and carrying on, if the cameras were working, that was. Breno's next. Without a winch on the front of the forerunner, I don't even want to think about what we'll have to do if he gets stuck. This is insane. <laughs> Are you ripping? 
Bar. Woohoo! Go the Forerunner! Go the tyres! Go everything! Woo! Forward ground action! <laughs> oh, Bredo, he just loves this stuff, doesn't he? It's just one of those ones you look back on and you just go, wow, I've done it. Nothing better than rolling in a camp after you've been forward driving like that, you know, just with all your mates there, just want to kick back, get the fire going and have a couple of coldies. <laughs> There's over 120 acres of campsites on the property, some near amenities and others as private as you want. With the weather playing funny buggers, we've chosen to stay in what they call the bush cafe. It'll give us a chance to dry out around the campfire. The cameras took over an hour sitting next to the fire to come back to life which gave me just enough time to cook up some well-deserved tucker. <laughs> oh boy, I tell you what, you just can't get good stuff. No, no, not true, not true, not true. Can't get sober stuff. To start with, we're gonna bung in this strange form of cabanossi. I'd like to point out that there was eight feet of sausage here, but I asked Glenn to cut it. <laughs> and now we've got about three inches. This kind of sausage, you know, the, the processed jobby with lots of fat in it, Sorry, not fat, flavour buds. Really does work well if you give it a good cook, and eh? I mean, how good does that smell That's already? Awesome. Yeah. Can you chuck the uh, onion in, Glenno? And I'll bung the beef in. Nice mince from a good fridge. It's just for Glenn, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is everyone else having? <laughs> oh, what are you guys eating? Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't really be much simpler, could it, so far? Um, and that cabin Aussie, that's optional. You know, if you've got some sausages, you can chop them up, chuck them in. Ian's recipe's kind of built to be modified. A bit like Breno's forerunner. Really? <laughs> <laughs> in Ian's recipe, um, he didn't mention any soy sauce. But look, I got this little thing about meat. I reckon beef especially, you add a little bit of soy. <laughs> and it's guaranteed to improve the flavour. Okay, um, oh, so we've, that. we've got the soy in there and it instantly, instantly smells good, doesn't it, eh? Well, just, oh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> now, we got Ian's recipe perking away here. Ian did stress lots of garlic, okay? But he also said you can bung in any spices you want. We'll just put a little bit of garlic in. It's probably about that much. Don't watch this if you like wimpy food, okay? That is a lot of garlic. It's very cold out here, and there have been rumours of vampires. Uh, and then Seymour showed up and they all left. But... <laughs> we'll bug in a little bit of ginger. <laughs> I should do. Chilo! Oops! Oh dear, made a mistake. Okay. Oh, oh dear, there we go. That left, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. One more for good measure. <laughs> One more for good measure. Now, by this stage, Ian's going, oh, my kids would never eat that. Yeah, well, you're right. But my kids will. <laughs> six packages. Get that all oh, nice yeah. and gumped up. Oh, smell yeah. that, eh? Ooh, oh, wow. Yeah. Right, oh, that's a good mix up. Now, what kind of a winner is this? Red kidney beans. This is the health component of this meal. <laughs> I'll just get one out. <laughs> ah, there we go, they all go in. Good stuff. Bung in two tins. <clears throat> just because these two guys are sitting very close in that forerunner all day tomorrow. <laughs> this is uh, tasty cheese. You're probably wondering how we can be this merry and not have had more than a couple of beers. Well, after a day like today, it's just kind of good to be alive, isn't it, really? I and mean, be out of the rain. <coughs> and be out of the rain, oh. What we're going to do now is take the pot over here, bung a shovel full of coals on top, just to let a bit of heat go down through the cheese, just to melt the cheese. Whoa! This is when you really don't want the plastic oh, handle to fall off. Oh, wow, that looks like tucker. Oh, Be careful that chilli doesn't burn a hole through the bottom of them bowls. <laughs> oh, they're only thin. <laughs> That's gonna be great. Pass it down the line, I reckon. Oh. Alrighty. Thanks, mate. You too.
That's good. Oh, that's pretty good, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> Hey, Glenno, there's Rob up there, might drop up. Hey, oh, yeah, nice big tractor he's got there, mate, isn't it? That's the ultimate green machine, isn't it, eh? Rob's family won this land in a ballot back in 1908, and looking around, it's pretty easy to see why Robert never left. Got the big green machine, Rob? Yeah, it's a real four-wheel drive, mate, <laughs> 80 horsepower, and weighs about six tonnes, so he can do a snatch fairly easy <laughs> these days. <laughs> snatch, <laughs> if he pull it in half, if oh, it's stuck. Yeah, well, we watch the little ones, we don't stretch them too much. <laughs> 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 make them bigger. Yeah, that's it's right. Something yeah. you get for free at La Yeah, Luka. that's right. <laughs> you get your yeah. truck leaf. <laughs> it's We're a doing... four-way. Yeah, it's a four-in-one bucket you can... Uh, um, pick up posts off the ground or pull out lantana bushes or all that sort of toys that we big boys like to play with. <laughs> <laughs> you love plucking lantana, don't yeah, you? Yeah, it gives me a great deal of pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, I wish the National Parks felt like that way. <laughs> yeah. Every time they shut down a track, it just covers itself in lantana. Yeah, well, when you take the human activity out there, the, uh, the, the vegetation goes wild. So It was your grandfather who first came to Levuka, wasn't it? He was original selector and he drew it in a land ballot and uh, it came here and uh, all it was was green bush and his uh, his father backed him up helped get him on his feet and they came from uh, Fiji and that and uh, when his father came here he said this looks like Levuka and Fiji so we'll call it that so uh, yeah, yes and we've enjoyed hosting people and um, yeah. I must say 98% of them are pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It must be sad for any landowner mm. to come out and see some fool doing donuts. Yeah, you know that's right. I mean, oh, well, we better leave you to your work and we'll go back to having some fun. Right, oh, John, yeah. <laughs> good on you, yeah, Rob. All the best, it's good yeah. to see you, mate. Good. So, John, you've tested us so far, mate. Where are you taking us today? Well, I figured, you know, we've had such a dry run of it so far, we should try and find a bit of mud. <laughs> so, uh, Reckons Mickey's track's good for that at the moment. Um, we'll go and have a look at that, eh? Hey? After three generations, Rob knows this environment like the back of his hand. And that's why he's letting us have a play, because he knows that a couple of good rains and Mother Nature will have a way. She always does up here. Right, eight, time to give this a proper crack. That Mickey track, that was a lot of fun. It was just so uh, so unique, so different to anything else we've ever driven. Just driving through big paddocks and then just mud holes of death every five or ten metres. I know we're in nasty puddles, but there's a real horrible one right in front by the look of it. There's something hanging under the bum of your car there, John. Uh, I've noticed this thing on the back of John's rear diff. <laughs> I tell you what, that's something you would not see in a million years, eh? Dead set. <laughs> oh, found out what's hanging underneath your car there, John. <laughs> hey, you picked him up. Picked him up in a puddle. <laughs> G'day, little mate. He's alive and well in there, too. Somehow, in that last boggy section, a turtle wound up clinging to the diff. Hey, look, I finally found someone I can race. <laughs> Better put him back in his home, eh? We've probably woken him up from his lunchtime nap. Bye, matey. Oh, how beautiful is this country, eh? 
just when I thought things were getting easy, I found the mud hole to end all mud holes. Oh, what happened to the ground? Oh, that's a big angle there, Ruthie. Well, the only thing keeping Milo up here is the edge of the bank. Here comes Milo's personal recovery team. If you're watching this and you own a particularly big helicopter, can you bung a hook on it and come over and give us a bit of a lift? Because, man, this is sticky. OK, John, we have got tension. Where are winching? Here we go, mate. Stuck hard. Well, that ain't stuck, Glenn. It's merely not moving anywhere. Oh, it's a very nice feeling, Glenn. It's coming back. Very stop. Thanks for that, mate. That was awesome. Oh, there's that horrible little bit I fell over into. I'm glad to see the end of it, I can tell you. Better than that other side, mate. That was a big hole. I know we found turtles earlier, but you don't know what you'd find in that big hole. <laughs> well, there'd be sea urchins in there. It's deep enough. It's like an Olympic swimming pool. <laughs> Complete with logs and mud. <laughs> oh, bad jokes with good mates. That's what it's all about. Well, there you go, guys. We came out here in extreme weather conditions to practice our extreme weather driving. And look what happened. We did exactly that. And I guess it really nailed a couple of points for me. The first one is that when the conditions go bad, you can get into potential danger, even in the safe environment of a place like Lavuca, a beautiful four-wheel drive park a couple of hours from town. So if you can get into trouble here, you can really get into trouble a couple of thousand k's from home right out in the bush. Far better to practice here before you go. And the second thing is, you know what makes a real adventure? When you're with a bunch of butte people. It makes it a lot safer too if there's other vehicles there, if you can recover each other. You all work towards a common purpose, finishing that track. I really want to thank Robert and Rosemary. They're just wonderful people. This is one of the best places on earth not just for four-wheel driving, but for camping too. Give Lavuka a try sometime. Good on you guys. See you on a track sometime. If you're interested in taking the family to Lavuka Recreation Park, and remember, we were doing some of the more difficult tracks and in the rain, then give Robert and Rosemary a call or head to their website, www.lavuka.com.au. There's no better way to finish a Lavuka trip than at the Crown Hotel in Urbanville. Daryl and Amanda will make you feel more than welcome. G'day! Welcome to Ruthie's Ruthless Tales. Go on, grab a slice of fair dinkum, Australia. Get your dose of Ruthie and put a smile on your dial. 